Hi and welcome back to this web series on System Center Operations Manager 2012 R2 covering installation and configuration. My name is Daniel Queen and you are watching part 6 where we're going to cover installing and configuring the reporting server role in Operations Manager. The first part that this, uh, the first thing that this entails is installing SQL reporting services on either our existing database server or you could put it on a a separate database server. In our case we'll just use the uh, same one that we've already got an instance running on. And then finally we're going to install the actual operations manager reporting server role. So with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started. Okay so let's start by connecting to our SQL server. And for the sake of brevity, I've skipped all the boring parts of the <clears throat> SQL prerequisite checks and everything and gotten straight to the installation type. So on the SQL Server, we've already gotten our operations database and our operations data warehouse installed. So we want to add a feature. And I want to add the reporting services here. You can set whatever you want here. Since SCOM is going to go through and change this anyways later on down the road, it doesn't really matter what you put. I'm going to put my generic uh, SQL server user account and password. SCOM will go in and modify this, like I said, the installer for that and change it to its own service account. Install only. It's fine. And now we wait. Okay, so the reporting services install is complete. What I want to make sure of now is that our reporting services is working correctly before we do the SCOM install. So I'm going to run the reporting services configuration tool. We're going to connect to our server. Let's make sure everything looks good. So that's working. Move on to the web service URL. Let's click apply. And this will set our report server URL. Test that. While we're waiting for that, we'll move on. So we want to make sure and set the database. So we're going to create a new report server database. That's okay for now. This is the correct server our connection successful my database name is fine report server and that's fine finish. Check this uh, report manager URL and we'll click apply. I'm not going to use email settings
going to specify my execution account. A lot of this configuration is a bit spurious, really, because SCOM is going to come in here and pretty much wipe away everything that I've done. But I like to do this just to make sure that my report my reporting services is functioning correctly and I can address any issues we may have now with just the SQL reporting services before I involve operations manager so that looks good now and you can see we don't have the error anymore and we can test this one which we actually saw a second ago was working fine one of the telltale signs you know that um, well not that it's working, but if you're missing this, what I'm about to show you, if you're missing it, you need to go back and troubleshoot this. Under scale out deployment, if you do not see this as status joined, you have a problem. You need to see this as status joined. If this is missing, you need to go back through these and make sure your account credentials are right or that you can connect to the database and so forth. Just because I want to be a good admin, I want to go ahead and do a backup here. That's um that's fine. Okay. All right, everything looks pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part. Okay. So for the next step in this process, we're going to want to install the Operations Manager reporting server component. Now, like most other components in Operations Manager, you can locate them on completely different servers, or you can co-locate them with other components. In this case, the reporting server, you're going to want to install this role where you have installed the reporting services. Now with the reporting services, we happen to install it on the same database server as our operational database and our data warehouse database. That was mostly for the sake of just this demonstration, or in your environment, you may do it for the sake of saving a SQL license. But wherever you install the reporting services, you would do yourself a favor to go ahead and just install the SCOM reporting server role right there. So I've already got my SCOM media in the disk drive here on my SQL server. Let's go to install. We're going to install the reporting server. And if you want to see your information about it, it will actually tell you here that this, uh, this feature requires a local SQL reporting services instance to be installed. So don't try to install this on a management server and point it back to a reporting database on another server. Although I suppose if you really wanted to, you could try and locate a report server, your reporting database on a remote server and just install reporting services here. But generally, it's just better to co-locate all of uh, your report database, your reporting services, and your reporting server. So let's just go through this installer. All prerequisites have passed. Now, um, I guess I should say, if you came straight from the last step it will give you a warning that a restart is required because we installed the reporting services so before you do this it would probably be good to go ahead and just issue a restart otherwise you'll receive a warning here so let's agree give it a management server name now here uh, a quick word on permissions that you're going to need to install this role you're going to do yourself a favor if you are already a sysadmin on the SQL instance and also you are an operations manager administrator so if you've already set yourself up in the console under the user roles as an administrator uh, beyond that let's go ahead and put in the name of our management server which is excel scom01.xlab.com and this will contact scom for any configuration data it needs Okay, so now it knows the SQL Server instance, and we're using the default instance, so that's fine. 
Okay, it wants our data reader account that we have previously set up. So let's give it that user and credentials. Make sure it's the data reader you're giving here, not the data writer. One of the reasons you're going to want to make sure that your assist admin, whoever is running this, I should say, I should say is a sysadmin, is because SCOM is going to go through and set all kinds of security permissions on the database for this, just like it did in the other um, installation parts. All right, I'm going to not participate in these. It doesn't really matter anyways because I've got no internet connection. I turn off updates for the same reason, and let's go ahead and tell it to install. So here it's going to go ahead and configure reporting services and in fact if you were so inclined you could go into the reporting services uh, configuration. I want to go ahead and pin that to my start. If you were so inclined you could watch this and actually see SCOM going through and modifying all your previously set up reporting services configurations. First, well, I guess it hasn't quite gotten there yet, but you will see here in a bit that it's going to change these uh, service accounts to something else. Ah, as you see right here, configuring the SQL reporting services account, and now it's going to configure security for us, and so forth. So just sit back and get yourself a cup of coffee through this, and this one shouldn't take too terribly long. Okay, and it looks like it has completed, so let's go ahead and close this window. And we can go ahead and close out our installer. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to need to do here on our SQL Server is we need to allow TCP80 to the SQL Server so that other people can actually hit our reporting services. I suppose we could have done this before we did the SCOM install part. So I'm going to open up uh, Windows Firewall, go to Advanced Settings, Inbound Rules, just to a new rule for port, TCP port 80, Allow, I'm going to do it on all my firewalls. Give it a name, and there we go. Uh, for most people, maybe if you're in an enterprise environment, you don't have Windows Firewall turned on, but uh, for the sake of completeness, that is required. And so, to check our work, let's go over to our SCOM server here. And let's go ahead and test to make sure we can hit our... There we go. There's that one, and reports, there's our reports. So let's open up our console, and sure enough, there is reporting. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and check administration under settings and reporting, and sure enough, there is our reporting server URL. Let's go to reporting here, and if you don't see your reports yet, it takes a short amount of time for them to be deployed, not terribly long. Uh, if you're not seeing this for a long time, make sure you go back and see if port 80 is still being blocked. But uh, I, I know when I was recording this earlier, um, I had forgotten to open port 80, so uh, this was not populating. As soon as I opened it, there they are. So with this, uh, all of your SCOM reporting services are installed and configured. Well, I hope you've uh, found this helpful, and I will try and get the next part uploaded as quick as I can. I believe in the next one we're going to go through installing and configuring uh, SCOM's web uh, console. So be on the lookout for that, and I will see you all next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.